they will be back under the lights on Saturday night. Missouri, Carolina, powered by Electric Bikes of Charleston, electricbikescharleston.com. You got to miss being underneath those lights, don't you, Perry Orth? Mm, man, it's good stuff right there. That's uh, <laughs> good stuff. No, we uh, definitely miss it, even though I don't. I'm glad I'm not out there anymore. Uh, the thought of getting smushed by one of those beasts out there, not not super appetizing at this point. Maybe I guess when you're 22, you're dumb and you don't give a crap. You're ready to just run run into something and have some kind of pain. 31, not uh, not as much. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> this Carolina defense continues to present the pain every week. They are just spectacular. But yeah. a quarterback who seems to be able to handle a lot of it is your boy Lenoris Sellers, who just gets better and better. Perry, uh, we talked to Steven yesterday, and I mentioned to him, I said, you know, that game last weekend, you're backed up, you're inside the 10-yard line after the ball snapped. He's rolling to his right. Kid gets out pressure, hits him, spins off, runs back to his left, throws across his body, the ball – Zips through the air 40 yards, lands in the arms of Jared Brown, who takes it another 11 yards before he's tackled, a gain of 51 to get them out of there and in position to score. Not every, not near any every quarterback can make a play like that. And that's just more indication of how much his brain is settling down uh, with the speed of the game being as quick as it is. It, it seems a lot slower than it used to be. Yeah, he is. I mean, that play right there, I think, solidifies why I have been so high on him. Uh, just his composure to be getting hit and get out and not just think, okay, I'm hit, time to scramble and make a run for it, like you maybe would have eight games ago. Um, but uh, found the open guy through a great ball and just, man, he, he really is. He's progressing the right way. He's taking care of the ball. I hope it continues, knock on wood. But – yeah, the, the, the balance that our offense is, is providing defenses, it's tough. They're tough to stop. Even without a true bona fide number one receiver, uh, mm -hmm. which is really Simon, but uh, a wide receiver, um, you know, they're doing it by committee. But, yeah, he's, he's coming a long way. He's got a bright future ahead of him. And, I mean, he's got a bright future ahead of, right now. And, uh, you know, I've seen different rankings that are having him as one of the top 10 quarterbacks in college football. And, uh, yeah, he, the kid can play and he's, um, my, my prediction and I'll stay to this, um, you know, since even dating back to when I saw him in high school, if he takes care of himself and does what he needs to, he'll go down as one of the best, if not the best we've ever had and will play on Sundays. And, uh, and I don't say that lightly. I don't just say that. Um, he has every physical gift. Plus, you see how cerebral of a kid he is and the, the leadership uh, qualities that he has, um, his humbleness that he has. I mean, we don't I mean, you don't want to talk about the athletic ability. I mean, my God, I mean, he six, three, 240 pounds and runs and moves the way he does. I mean, he's a linebacker that can throw the football and. Uh, Tell you boys, he's got us in a, in in the, in the catbird seat, um, and we we find a way to win out. And there's some chaos, and we you can never say never. I mean, we're 21 right now, and if chaos happens and we went out and win the way we have been, we might not get to Atlanta, but we might sneak in there. So <laughs> hold your breath and buckle up. I took well, a little comfort in seeing that the committee was brave enough to put us over LSU and say, listen, you know, regardless of what happened on the field, you know, Carolina is a better team right now than LSU. I did take some comfort in that. I was like, all right, there's a shot. We might have a shot here. <laughs> you know, I did as well. And the other thing I, that, that I liked about it is that they're, 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 they're taking into consideration who's the top 25 this week, right? And I also, and you know, you, hindsight's twenty twenty, and LSU won the game. They were gifted that game, and if Lenore Sellers gets hurt, um, do we win? Or, or if he doesn't, I mean, get if he hurt, doesn't get hurt, if he does not get hurt. Do we win? I like our chances a lot. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, I know that's both are part of the game refs and injuries, but man, I tell you that game was, that game was taken from us. And, and I don't say that hardly ever. Um, But I mean, you look at, if we were eight and two with a win against LSU um, or whatever, yeah, seven and two with a win against LSU, we'd be, we'd be right at 15, maybe even, maybe, maybe even up. I, I, uh, I actually wholeheartedly agree with that. I said the exact same thing yesterday because A and M's at fifteen right now. When Carolina beat them by there you go twenty four points. I, I literally it makes me feel smart. I mentioned mentioned the same thing. I thought that they'd be an A and M spot um, if they were uh, if they had won that game. And the, we will we'll obviously uh, you can't change it. But <laughs> the funny thing is, the more football that I've watched this year, and the more that I go back to that ball game. And, and we're not going to harp on it. We'll move on and talk about what's what's to be here. But, um, you know, our, we want to be unburdened by our burdens that have been our burdens of other burdens or whatever. We don't have to worry say. about being unburdened. Um, you got to unburden your burdens. But, but no, going we back to the to more – We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry. The, the more <laughs> that I've watched, scared. that play has happened multiple times in college football this year that I have seen with my own very eyes not just in the SEC, across the country with no flag. Then I'm talking about the, uh, yeah. the Kyle Kennard. to the same guy. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it did. It happened to the same guy. You're right, Phil, like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, yeah. no flags. Uh, but in that, imp- that that instance right there, they decided that, uh, you know, they, they'd toss one at Kyle Kennard, who I think is the best defensive end in the country. And, um, you know, they, they, they screwed him on that and the entire football program. But – Look, so Carolina goes to Vandy last week and and dominated the game. Um, I thought going into the game it was a bad matchup for Vanderbilt for a multitude of reasons, and it turned out to be that way. I know Diego Pavia has been a nice story. Um, I think, you know, I don't know, uh, suing the NCAA, uh, filing a lawsuit the, the week of, you know, maybe your biggest game of the season is kind of a silly move, and he paid for that, if you will. But um, – one of the things that they've done well in the last two weeks combined, Mr. Orth, is run for 500 yards. They have run for 500 yards, and that's not all rocket. Obviously, Lenoris, and a lot of credit to Oscar Attaway. This kid gets in there and busts his rear end, picks up first downs, moves the football. Um, you know, So I think that as much as Lenoris has developed – the run game, which he, of course, has been a major part of, yeah, has has helped that as well. They are opening running lanes. Uh, one of the things I'd like you to speak specifically to, though, Perry, is running is uh, the portion of the run game that has been designed for him because it, it's it's you know getting him outside of the pocket. He's you know kind of running off tackle. A lot of them are are like I feel like quote unquote low percentage runs where where he's uh, I'm probably not saying this right so you step in and correct me but like one of the fears generally when you're running a quarterback a bunch is oh my god are we going to get this guy killed or what it seems like a lot of these runs for him have have given him some space to be able to protect his body get out of bounds get down to it what what have you seen in that game over the last few weeks well he's not running between the tackles right he's 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 using he's getting on edges right which which anytime you can get on edges when you're running the football you you can create running lanes to where you're not feeling like you're just running into traffic and he's done a good job taking care of his body right when it's time to go down he goes down and when it's time to lower your shoulder and push he does it and um, fortunately for him and us he's got the the size to do it but yeah that extra dynamic of 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 forcing teams to play 11 on 11 and it uh, it helps us tremendously in the pass game, right? And then uh, you know what 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 you guys have heard me talk about the ability to make the first guy miss, right? Rocket has done that the last few games as good as any running back we've had here since the Mike Davis and in Lattimore days. I mean, I look at the touchdown run a few plays after Lenoris's uh, scramble and 50, 50 yard deep ball to to Jared Brown against Vanderbilt. We ran the ball inside zone. And he is attacking a hole where there's a safety right there in the hole, in the phone mm-hmm. booth. Mm-hmm. And Rocket makes a miss and runs for a touchdown. That, mm-hmm. That's it. Hat on a hat, phone booth, make the first guy miss, and you got a shot to, to have an explosive play. And he does that later on in the game, virtually the same thing. Somebody kind of comes at his legs and he makes the guy miss, and 
he's off to the races, right? You typically don't see a lot of runs where you pass through that first and second uh, layer and there's nobody, there's nobody back there. And it happens sometimes, but, but yeah, you, you make the first guy miss and that's where your explosive plays are created. Look at uh, the pass, right? The 53 yard pass Lenoris had, he had to make somebody miss to then create that explosive play. But those chunk plays, that's where I believe our offense has missed this year. And, you know, as somebody who's called plays now, at the, not at the division one level, but at the high school level, um, it's hard to scheme explosive plays every week and every drive and every time you've got the ball. Your players have to create those explosive plays. That's the reason why the recruiting battles are so hard after some of these elite athletes, because mm. you want to just get the ball in their hand and let them go and score. And, um, you know, we've done that. And, you know, it's funny seeing people on social media now wanting to give coach Loggins praise when I remember after the Ole Miss game, I went on here and I said, I thought he was actually doing a pretty good job this season. Mm -hmm. uh, had a bad day and everybody's making fun of me and telling me that I sh stupid for saying that and this, <laughs> that, and the other, but you got to look at the body of work. You can't say, okay, we got our ass kicked against arguably the best defense in the conference. I would say second to ours, but, Oh, Miss has got one of the. I mean, look what they did to Georgia. I mean, right, right. So, um, overall, the balance with the run in the pass and the ability to create completions. Because I just right now, I think from a receiver standpoint, we're we're lacking that person to go out and just do it on their their own. And yep. uh, sixty one and a half percent, nine touchdowns, four picks for a freshman quarterback who runs the football a lot. Six and three, got you number 21 in the country and knocking on uh, top 15 with a couple wins to finish out the year. Hard to complain, boys. I've, yeah. uh, I've, I've been a part of much worse Carolina seasons, both as a fan and a player. So, I love And those stats are without the tune-up game of Akron, too. I mean, which he was injured and didn't get to sit out. So most of that is coming against conference opponents. In the second exactly. half against LSU. Yeah. To, to that point, I look at even Robbie Ashford. You know, mm -hmm. he, he played the second half against LSU and the game against Akron, 71.4%. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're, we're – I think Kirk Herbstreet may have – somebody may have mentioned it. No, maybe it wasn't Herbstreet. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about our offensive and defensive efficiency. Um, is one of the best in the country on both sides of the football. We mm -hmm. don't – we stack good plays really well. We don't stack bad plays really well, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have a bad play, we typically don't throw another bad play on it, and then it tumbles downhill, and next thing you know, we're, we're down 21 points, right? Like even the Alabama game, they go down the field, score quick, we get the ball, three and out. Our defense comes out and just hammers them, punt it back. How many times in years past in, in Gamecock land do we go out there a big game like that, give up a touchdown, three and out punt, and they could go and score again. I mean, you, right. you've seen it. Then it's like, then the defense wakes up, but by then you're playing catch up. It's like, okay, you got touchdown, boom, it was cut off. And mm -hmm. that's where and why our team is in the, the driver's seat to finish out the best regular season we've had in over a decade. Yeah. I, I and, and, you know, to, to your point there too, you look at the last four games that Lenora Sellers is, has played in. And I know that one of those was uh, a loss against Alabama, but I'm going to read you. I'm just going to read you the, his, his stat line, Perry. And I just, and then my question is going to be um, what, what it, you're talking about the offense and Dow Loggins now he's calling it. What does that tell you? 23 of 30. This is against Alabama. 23 of 31 uh -huh. for 238, 74.2% completion percentage. Uh, he carried it 16 times for, 19 yards. Remember, he was sacked four times in the ballgame. Uh, Oklahoma, 16 of 24, 175. Uh, he was sacked five times, carried it 13 times for 28. 13 of 27 in AM. Remember, with I know of three drops in that game and two people ran the wrong route. Um, but, um, but you can probably tack on four extra completions there. But 13 of 27 for 244. Uh, 15 carries for 106. And then last game, 14 of 20 for 238. 13 carries 
for 38. So everything's within 13 to 16 carries, and basically everything is – he's averaging about 25 attempts per game. And in those games, he's he's really completing about 65 70% of his passes. What does that tell you about the system that Dow Loggins has now at Carolina with him as the quarterback? I just – I don't – I don't think people are – giving Dow enough credit, not only for the job that he's doing this season, but you're taking an NFL guy that is verbiage, language, run checks, pass game checks, calling protection, drop back pass, play action from under center. And this offense schematically looks nothing like last year's offense. No. And to be able to make that switch, I think is a lot harder um, said than done. And, and I, I'm, I'm pleased, man. I, I really am. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm pleased. And it all starts up front because this is from top to bottom, maybe one of the the lesser talented receiving cores we've had here in a long time mm-hmm. um, without just that standout guy. And I'm not diminishing their abilities because they're obviously all elite athletes, but I'm talking about that one guy that's like, even going back to when I played, you've got uh, Debo and Farrow and Hayden, Hayden Hurst. And then after that, you had Brian Edwards and Shai Smith. And then you've got Juice Wells and Leggett and, and, uh, and, and some really, really good football players. And we don't have that number one guy. And to be able to, to be efficient that we are on offense, I think it just goes to show that when you do have that quarterback that can help in the ground game, there's a lot of balance that, takes place and there's a lot of pressure that takes place off the the play caller Missouri uh coming into the game this is going to be their um most challenging environment of the season yeah and they're they're going to send Drew Pine out there most likely it's very very unlikely that Brady Cook will play he is listed as doubtful we just talked to uh, Gerard Hamilton just a little while ago with powermizzou.com and he echoed those those comments as well um this Carolina, uh, this Carolina defense <laughs> is playing like the best defense, maybe not just in the league, but in the country. You've got a yeah. their center who had started thirty five straight games. He's out for the season, and I know Drew Pine's been around and he's played a bunch at, at Notre Dame, but he's never he's played in it. Uh, the so center's out. out. The center's okay. out. The quarterback's gotcha. out. And then you're going to so start. The quarterback drink. is out. The court, yeah, he's out. I mean, they're listing him as doubtful, but he's out. Um, that's why the spread is 14 points. Yeah, it's gone up to yeah, 14. That's why I figured it went up because they know. Yeah. <laughs> and and so Perry, you're to to flip your brain to the defensive side here and how aggressive they've been. They everything's been thrown at them this year. They've caught it. You know, uh, dual threat quarterbacks, elite wide receivers, elite running backs, this, that, and the other. They've made the adjustments. They've made the plays. Um, they've held three opponents on their home field to under 10 points, which is unbelievable. It's ridiculous, actually. I don't care who the opponent is. And so now you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna start a quarterback who's never been in an environment like this with a freshman who's never or a, with a uh, center who's never started a game. They're gonna have to figure out their communication in front of 80,000 people who are gonna be loud, and half of them or more are gonna be drunk. Uh, and 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 this team is playing the way that it is. You know. When you think about the defense and how they'll approach this content, I mean, what do you in it, how aggressive will they be? Because I've said that. I, I, I'll, let me say one more thing, real quick. I'm sorry, not to be wordy. If if Shane Beamer gets a chance, and I don't want to jinx it, and I don't know if it'll happen, but if he gets a chance on Saturday night, yeah, he'll yeah, he's he's gonna it, do it. He'll Steve Spurrier <laughs> from the '90s in a hurry, and I wouldn't blame him. And he can hide behind the cover of. Style points. Are you kidding me? We're trying to get into the playoff. We want this thing to look as, but also it could have another meaning as in I'm tired of getting beat by them and I'm tired of Eli Drinkwood saying whatever the hell he wants after they beat us. How aggressive will this team be knowing that the center and the quarterback are probably aren't going to know what hit them once they get under those lights on Saturday? Honestly, man, I don't think that they're going to change a bunch. I think that we've been whooping teams rear end just with the front four. And mm-hmm. I don't expect that to be any different. I mean, they've been having races back to the quarterback. You can, it almost looks like they're playing with each other, that they're like, all right, you know, 
tag the quarterbacks it, who's going to be the first one to get to him, not can we get to him, right? Who's going to be first? And it, uh, I just, with, I, I personally see this game, and I said this this morning on the radio here in Columbia, I see this, this game looking a lot like the Missouri-Alabama game, where they just can't, Missouri just can't get out of their own way. I'm not really impressed with their quarterback. Uh, I'm not impressed with them from an offensive standpoint. I mean, their defense saved them last week against Oklahoma, and Oklahoma led for parts of that game. Um, I just, I, I, I think it's too much, and and obviously, I don't want to jinx the guys, but defensively, I mean, I'm listening to guys on College Game Day and the SEC Network talk about this is the most fun defense that they've watched play all season. This is the best defense in the country, not the conference or the, the, the old SEC East, but the country. And it starts up front, but we've got guys that can run in the back end, and the linebacker play has been phenomenal. The kid that came from Georgia Tech might be the, the most undervalued player on the defense. Uh, the dude's everywhere, and he doesn't miss tackles. And uh, the way that we play and the aggressive nature that we play, I just – Unless we start giving up big plays and explosives, uh, because they are really talented at receiver, I don't. I don't see how Missouri is able to score more than twenty four points. I think that's the line to get to to win. If you can break twenty four, you'll win the ball game. Um, and, and Missouri's got a good defense, but they're not world beaters. Um, so I, I could see this being a 27, 13, 20. Honestly, I could see the game going much like the game on Saturday, close because we haven't taken the step of scoring a ton. Um, and then as the game goes along, we wear them down. It ends up being a like a 27-7, 27-14 type game. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I think it's, I think it's an uphill battle. It's a, another really bad matchup, which for years I, we always used to say, man, it's a tough matchup for our guys. Yeah. We keep facing teams that it's just not – it's not a good matchup. When you're tying in a new quarterback, new center, on the road, the place is going to be bonkers against the, arguably the best defensive line in the country. Tough. Yeah. Uh, at Alabama and at a and this year, Missouri, those are their two losses, and they are by a combined score of – you ready? 75 to 10. Yeah, hmm. I expect that to continue. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it, hopefully, it, hopefully it does. And as I as we just discussed, Barry, that give, might be my score give, prediction. Give uh, Shane Beamer a uh, a chance to, you know, we don't get many of those chances around. No, here. you got to push it in, right? I mean, we, I mean, let me pull this up. I mean, guys, we're, I know it's a it's a long shot, so I don't want to get my garnet goggles on here, but, but I mean, we're we're sniffing. That if chaos happens, we we could find a way to sneak in at twelve. Um, that would be that would be quite the story. I know it's the I've heard people say it's the most gamecock thing of all time to be this close to having like some incredible achievement in football, and we don't get in because of a one handed catch on a helmet or a horrendous oh. penalty called by by <laughs> by the ref. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's it's painful, but. Let's not hold out hope yet. I mean, let's see here. We've got we're at twenty one. We've got we want Clemson to continue to win, which is terrible to say, but we want them to continue to win until we play them. Kansas State and Colorado, both of them could probably find a way to lose. AM's gonna lose to Texas. We gotta have somebody find a way. Man, maybe that'll be Clemson. Maybe Clemson will beat beat SMU to knock them out. Well, they don't they don't play. You mean well, like in uh, Atlanta, right? In, 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 you're talking about Charlotte, in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, that's probably Miami SMU, but I don't see the Big Twelve or ACC period getting them more than one. I mean, even in a nine and th- a nine and three SEC team <clears> would probably leapfrog those. Uh, so I think I think those those leagues will take care of themselves because they're probably one bit leagues. Washington State doesn't have the strength of schedule to stay ahead of Carolina. Um. Yeah. You're right about Clemson, and and they'll beat Clemson's got Citadel between Pitt and Carolina, so they'll. It's just this weekend they they, they need to win and be ranked, and it's another ranked team. I I I think that it comes down to the SEC. You need as many three loss teams as possible. 
Yeah, then it's going to come down to us, LSU, and see who does Alabama have left? No, but Oklahoma and Vanderbilt. And Auburn. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. Auburn. My bad. The Tennessee's yeah. got nobody. They got Georgia, and they, Georgia. Tennessee's got Vandy, too. Um, so we really need Tennessee to put Georgia to three losses. Yeah. yeah. And pull for Georgia Tech to pull the stunning upset. Mm-hmm. Which they were close last year, and, and hey, they can that's do it. not that's not out of the question this season if Haynes King gets healthy. Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I think Georgia's up and down. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, just like everybody is. I uh, Vandy goes to LSU, but then they got Tennessee in Nashville. They're going to put everything they got in that game, and and Vandy can't match them in talent, but I wouldn't count them out. Tennessee's yeah. not a score a bunch team well, this year, you know. And keep in mind too, and, I, and we got to let you run here, Perry. But yeah, keep man. in mind too, like Louisville's at Stanford this weekend; they're twenty point favorites. Stanford's not any good. Is if Carolina can continue to win and look very good doing it, some of these teams we don't actually necessarily need to lose; they just don't need to look good. You yeah, know, like there's no reason for Louisville to be ranked ahead of them in that's under what any I mean. circumstance. Like if Louisville goes to Stanford and like squeaks out a seven point win or something, it's just an ugly football game. Well, like I mean. And if you take care of Clemson, you take care of Louisville's best win. Yeah, you that's know. right. That's right. Any uh, any final parting shots or nuggets you want to pass along before we get you out of here? No, man. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. Let's rock the house and uh, go Gamecocks. Yes, sir. Right to bear.com. Yeah. Protect All with right. bear over 50,000 members currently. This guy's leading the charge. You're the man, Perry. Leading them.